This week on the Facility Playbook, we sat down again with Greg and Mitch from KC Crew. Uh, last time we talked to them, it was filled with so much information, we had to break it into two parts. And in this episode, we're talking about how to over-deliver for all of your experiences from basketball to cornhole to pickleball. How do you manage those leagues? How do you create an amazing experience for the people playing in those leagues? And I hope you enjoy this episode with KC Crew. What's up, everybody? Do you own or manage a facility? Well, you are in the right place. Welcome to the Facility Playbook. I'm Luke Wade, founder and CEO of Facility Ally, and this podcast is about helping facility managers and owners learn from pioneers and veterans in the industry who have already built and managed successful sports facilities, entertainment venues, and clubs. Did you know that most of those facilities I just mentioned use between four and six different softwares to manage their reservations, memberships, lessons, leagues, camps, and clinics, and more? Revolutionize your facility with Facility Ally's all-in-one system. Learn more at FacilityAlly.com. And today, I'm really excited uh, to be here at the KC Crew offices and wear two hats today, but introduce Greg Malloy, General Manager of KC Crew, Manager of General Things, yep. and Mitch LaMandola, League Director, um, among many other things with KC Crew. Thanks, guys, for joining me today. Uh, I know you didn't have an option, but uh, appreciate, <laughs> pr appreciate you being thanks here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, what are some extra things that we do that Casey Crew does to make it fun? Uh, so I'll touch on so the staffing. So we've really revamped uh, how we you know how we do our hiring, our staffing from the very beginning. So um, high level, we essentially add you know multiple different steps to make sure you know if we get seventy people fill out the application, the next step is going to cut out forty of those people because you know they're obviously not committed. To, they don't want to do this. The next step that cuts out the other, the next half of people who you know we don't think would be good fits. So it's a multiple step process to get down to five qualified candidates. And out of those five, we usually get one or two. So it's, you know, it's not just having someone come in saying, hey, you're hired. It's adding multiple steps to find, you know, and it's putting barriers to find people who are going to, you know, jump through those based on, you know, what you're going to want out of your employees. So we want people who are social, who are fun, who are active, who are engaging. We call them the fun aunts or the fun uncles out at the leagues. So that's, you know, if you look at most other leagues around town, they might just have an official who's out there to get a paycheck, make calls, go home. Our staff is out there to welcome you the moment you get to the fields, you know, check in, have a conversation with you, call the game, make it fun, make it interactive, um, and just put the extra care into it because you can miss every other call. But if you're trying, if you're running out to the bases, they're going to yell, yell a lot less than if you're just standing back there and they don't even know what your name is. So. Yep, and I think that's one of the things I focused on from day one was, you know, and that was an experience I had in another league. You know, I went to ask the official what the score was because there wasn't a scoreboard, and he wouldn't tell me what the score was. And I just thought, man, why don't we have a scoreboard so everybody can see it and you're not bothering the official? And then I thought, well, how, why are you bothering the official? It shouldn't be a thing. These officials should want to talk to you and socialize with you. So when we started Casey Crew, it was essentially – Let's not hire the officials who went to official school and all they care is about the rules. Let's hire people who are fun and social and teach them the rules they need to know to be successful at their position. And so that's, I think, made us really, really different in that we're not – and, and per sport, right? So now yeah. we've learned along the way. Once we added basketball, we were like, we need officials that went to basketball training. We need real, we need real referees that know what they're doing because the, the competi competitiveness of basketball, the physicalness, like it, it's real deal. So depending on the sport, depending on what you're offering, you can go a diff couple different ways. And to Greg's point, you know, looking at hiring as a funnel is really, really important. Um, to his point, they're going along the steps and you're funneling down your best people that are going to turn out to be the best peop people for your leagues. Because at the end of the day, uh, these two guys and, and an, an additional staff member manage 4,000, 15,000 people a year in leagues. They're not on the fields every single day talking to every single one of these players all over the city. Our part-time staff are. So it's really important to find the right people who represent your business, Casey Crew, in the right way because they're the ones that everybody's seeing every week. They're the ones that they're interacting with. And so you got to make it really important to hire the right people, train them the right way, and then support them, you know, give them what they need. And so maybe let's talk about um, the officials and how we kind of manage them and, and are making it so that they have the support that they need. Oh. Uh Touching on just a last point, uh, we have the same officials every week at the location. And I think that's what makes us awesome is those officials get to know their players. They get known by name. We ask them to know the cap at least the captain's names. And the captains and the players know the officials' names. So in the weekly reviews, they can put that official as the person they know because that official becomes an actual person to them, not just a ref. So they're seeing them week after week. We have people saying, hey, where's this official working this season? I wanna, we want to work in their league, which to me, that's awesome. 
That's what, why, oh, why people are coming back, because they love their officials, they love their monitors. I go ref a league sometimes, and someone's like, where's Joe? I want Joe. I'm like, <laughs> dang, Joe. So, uh, so I'd love to hear that. And one way uh, we communicate with them is every se before each season, we have a kickoff meeting where uh, it's a uh, meeting where I can see everybody in person. Because like you said, we have 100 different leagues, 15,000 different people playing. We have a part-time staff of 60, so all different locations. Unfortunately, I can't make it to every location every night. Wish I could. Uh, but we have a kickoff meeting before each season where we can go over any updates, any new procedures, any problems they're having, anything they're seeing out on the fields. Because like you said, there are eyes and ears out there for KC crew. If they see something uh, that needs to be fixed, I'm going to fix it. Feedback from our staff. I'm always asking feedback. We ask for feedback midway through the season. Is there something that's going on? Is there a rule that you guys think is stupid that we need to change? Because you're the ones calling the rules. Uh, so the kickoff meeting is something, time for me to interact with them and also provide drinks and food and stuff like that and say thank you. Uh, something we do for them is a on fire program. I think it's a really cool program we do here at KC Crew where we, re we reward great work. Uh, so we have our base uh, pay for every sport it varies depending on how much work is involved. If you're refing, if you're only monitoring, if you require setup, it, it varies. Uh, but then on average, if you show up to your job, if you're getting awesome reviews, if you're wearing your jersey, if you're not losing equipment, you get a bump in pay, uh, average about $3 per sport. Uh, when that means is uh, after three perfect shifts, you get that bump up in pay. Or our kickoff meeting is not a mandatory meeting, but you get free free food and free drinks, and if you show up, you start the season on fire. So it's just an incentive for people to come interact with each other because, like you said, we have a lot of different sports where some people only do basketball, some people only do softball. Well, then they may never meet the basketball people if they don't meet outside of that league. So they get to meet with, yeah, everybody and see, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people who work for KC Crew, not just basketball. So it's also, and someone's like, oh, I didn't know we had those sports. I'm going to go work in basketball now. We have different officials that ref everything because they love what they do. Uh, in the management side of officials, uh, we use a couple different applications. Slack is what we use to communicate with them. Uh, that way it's on our phones and we have different channels. So I like to pride myself in that we're very organized. So we have a different channel for announcements, for procedures, per sport, and things like that. That way, if I only need to talk to the basketball people, the sand volleyball people aren't getting that information as well because that's just information they don't need. Uh, or if someone needs to find our injury waiver to fill out if someone gets injured, it's in a specific location that way they know where to find it and they're not calling me at 11 o'clock at night, hey, Mitch, what's the link to this? They know where to go. They can uh, self uh, be self-efficient out there on the field. So. And then uh, to manage their time, clock in, clock out. Yep. Uh, we use, oh, it's now called Workforce. It used to be Quick, uh, QuickBooks Time uh, Workforce. We put their schedules in there. They can see their full schedule in advance. I think it's one of the awesome, best things about having someone all season long. We ask them to commit to seven weeks. It's not a long time. Say, so, hey, when are you available for the summer season? You want you to work three nights a week? Uh, great, I'll plug you in. And they see it on their phone. They can clock in on their phone that way at our 15 different locations on a Monday night, I can see where everybody is uh, at 6.15. If someone is not there, I give them a call. Oh, there's running in traffic. Great, I can run out there myself and get the league started. So it's a great tool to see where people are, who's clocked in, who's working where. Uh, and then they can see their, their full schedule in advance as well. Uh, so if four weeks down the line, like, hey, Mitch, I'm on vacation this week. Great, I can pull that off. I see that it's, it's unassigned a week before, and then I, assign, and I send out to everybody, who wants to sub this shift? Uh, throw it on their schedule. So we don't like to overstaff. We like to have enough staff where people can enjoy their lives. So yes, I ask you to commit to seven weeks, but life happens, people get sick, people take vacations. If you let me know in advance, I can find someone because we have enough staff to work uh, shifts. A lot of times I'll throw it, hey, is a sub shift we have a sub shift available next Monday at this location. Three minutes away, three minutes after that, someone's like, I'll take it. And I think that's just about building your relationship with your staff members. and. Being, sure. com, uh, being uh, open with communication with them. Yeah, and I'm going to deep dive on two things there. I think the two biggest things, when I was managing this several years ago, I was struggling with part-time staff. Couldn't find people to work. Couldn't find people to show up to their shifts. Backing out last minute all the time, which means we had to cover last minute. We were working every night. We were stressed out. And so two things I believe completely flipped that and changed that around was essentially the, the hiring program where we funnel people down and they essentially they apply, they fill out a form, we have a meeting, we, they do training. So it's 
all the way down to make sure we're finding the perfect person to work for us that's a complete match for our entire system. And then the second piece is essentially the on-fire program. So once you find the right person, incentivizing them on how they sh should do the perfect job. And what we used to do was punish people. You don't show up for your league, uh, you lose a shift. You you know don't clock in, you don't wear your shirt, you lose a shift. So we were punishing people, which actually hurt us as a business as well, because now they're we got to find somebody else to take their shift. So what we did was completely flip it on his head and turn it into a positive thing where, hey, what's a perfect shift look like to us? Showing up five minutes early, wearing your uniform, all these different things make this a perfect shift. Well, if you make a perfect shift uh, three times in a row, you're committed. We want to reward you for that. So now you're paid $3 an hour for every hour you work while you're on fire. If you have an uh, imperfect shift, you show up late, you don't wear your jersey, whatever happens, you get back knocked down to regular pay and you have to have three again before you're back on fire. So those two things, in my opinion, now created, it defined what we needed from people. It, it gave them direction. It gave them incentivization. And so they know that, hey, if I do these things, I can make more money or I can, you know, I'm doing better. I'm almost like gamifying it and making it to another level. And so, and, th and those two things that we've done in the last three years, and maybe there's another one you guys want to add, I believe has completely changed it. We're not struggling with finding staff anymore. Uh, we're not having to work shifts. You're not having to go out there and work in the evening. So in my opinion, those two things just completely changed the game for us for part-time staff. And I think, Mitch, the last thing he said was just his relationship with the part-time staff. So thinking about it, it's funny. Like, we talk all the time. We both work for Enterprise, and we've taken pieces that we've learned from Enterprise and brought them over and implemented them into KC Crew. So one thing is, at Enterprise, I worked at the airport. We had VAs who were, they cleaned our cars for us. If they liked you, you got clean cars. If, you did, if they didn't know who you were and they didn't like you, your life was going to be uh, not very fun. So first thing I did when I got up there, I shook everyone's hand. I introduced myself. I got to know all of them. So whenever I needed clean cars, I had clean cars. So Mitch, he does an excellent job of getting to know every single part-time staff that we have as more than just a part-time staff, you know, by their names. He knows where they live. He has their contact info. Sounds creepy, but it helps him out just because if he, you know, when he's planning out all the leagues, if he has two people that say they can each work two different locations, but he knows this person lives closer to that one, this person lives closer to that one, he just assigns them because it makes the most sense. And our staff knows that. They trust Mitch that, you know, he's going to put them in a position to, uh, you know, make them as successful as possible. If they need something out of location, softballs, pickleballs, a volleyball line's broken, he's out there the next day getting it fixed. So when they show up the next time, everything's all good to go. And so, and, and that's awesome. And so I think one, get yourself a Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> Two, as a business owner or someone who is outside of it thinking like, well, what happens if Mitch leaves or what happens if something happens to Mitch? Well, we've started creating trainings and programs and systems so that, you know, we've already have somebody that works under Mitch. We're going to have somebody that works under him so that we can train all of our staff in this monitor in this way. So Mitch can take vacations. So Mitch <laughs> can do different things so he can kind of move up. And one of the things we're working on is lead consulting and we're working with facilities for that. And Mitch is really starting to help us out with that. And so um, the system and trainings are really important when you have a rock star you know one of my favorite things is he's creating the training he's the one that knows everything so he can help create the training for the next person which can help train exactly the way that Mitch does things so we're essentially making little Mitches that can help fill his spot so I think that's really important though and I highly you know if you got a great employee one of the things you can do is have them essentially make their own training because they know everything they know what what should be done and you can overview it but the best thing to, to test it is to give it to the next person and have them work on it as well and have them train with it so so I think that's really important. Um, so what's one of the wildest things we've we've seen in the leagues that you guys have ever seen in the leagues? What's one of the wildest things you've oh, seen? Oh, you take this, Greg? Uh, so it was, I think, five five or six years ago. It was the dodgeball championship for a league. And uh, I go out there to take photos of the, the tournament, the champions, all that. And I'm standing next to my employee, Adam. And it's the championship game. It finishes. The team wins. Everyone's all excited. And he leans over. He's like, hey, just start taking pictures. I was like, what? Well, why? I mean, are we going to wait for the trophies and all that? He's like, shut up. Just start taking pictures. <laughs> so I see one of the players get down on a knee, and I'm like, oh, all right, going to take as many pictures as I can. And it was cool. So Matt and Renee, they met playing Casey Crew through dodgeball. A couple years later, got married or won the championship. Matt proposed to Renee. Obviously, she said yes. And then at the wedding, we actually, I got invited out. We went from the wedding, and Renee's a school teacher, so we stopped at her school did an impromptu dodgeball game, and then went from there to the uh, wedding reception. So that was uh, that was probably the coolest memory that I've been a part of with Casey Crew. Just seeing it all come together. It's you know it's it's a league of people coming to have fun. It's two people you know connecting for life. It's a unique experience. You know then that carries over into the wedding. So just seeing it all come full circle and being a part of it was uh, was awesome. That's awesome. 
I don't think I don't, I don't, I don't have anything that can top that. Yeah. I just think the connections people make. I mean, every people tell us all the time. I met my best man playing KC Crew. I met my wife, my fiance, my husband, my life partner. I made new best friends. We have a cool free agent system. I don't think we've touched on that uh, mm -hmm. at all. Where if people come to Kansas City, uh, they don't know anybody, but they want to do something. Well, they sign up for our free agent system, where we do free agent teams in kickball, softball, pickleball, all the sports and put people together that necessarily don't have a full team. Maybe they're playing softball and they have a couple of friends that want to play together, but we pair with other people that have a couple of friends and then they create teams together. We have multiple teams that are playing kickball and softball and sand volleyball where they met as free agents, th fast forward three years down the line, now they're still playing together. They go out uh, to the bars after together and do those uh, fun things and they've created friends for life through KC Crew. And I think that's what makes our jobs awesome is seeing those things happen. Sure, and I think uh, several things there to your point. One, I met my wife playing volleyball <laughs> before Casey Crew existed. Um, also, I've met so many friends that I'm still friends with today through Casey Crew. Um, and then the other piece I, I definitely want to touch on is the bar of the week before we forget. Uh, but the free agent side, one of my favorite uh, things that happened to me as a free agent uh, was I actually had a kickball team and I needed an extra female to play on the team due to the co-ed rules. And so I'm searching through the free agent list just inviting females to my team. And one of the females that ended up joining my team comes, plays the first week I meet her uh, she ends up playing the second week and then by the third week I saw her on the news uh, as an anchor and I just started dying laughing I had no idea she was on TV I drafted this news anchor to play on my kickball team and she'd been playing me for two weeks and had no idea still good friends with her this uh, to this day but I just thought it was really cool she moved in from out of town to take this job didn't know anybody um, and was able to meet a lot of our friends and, and, and through that kickball league so that was really cool and then uh, yeah the free agent thing is, is awesome it's great for the people who just need one or two people it's great for a bunch of people who don't know anyone to meet new friends um, and then you have a lot of cool experiences where you meet your wife or your friend or whatever through it. Um, and so uh, the next thing is bar of the week. Let's talk a little bit about that. So obviously you've got 24 to 35 year old young demographic. They're wanting to go out. They're wanting to socialize. You know, they can do that at the, at the games each week. Um, but essentially we looked at how do we provide more value. So maybe talk a little bit about the bar of the week. Yeah. So uh, we have a, it's called the bar of the week program. So every week we have a different bar of the week. Uh, and so I'm always finding new bars and new locations. And what it is, it's a place for people to go after. So we, one of our core values is building community. So build community, community here at KC Crew, in our office, in individual teams, people playing together. But then how can we have them stay as a community outside of the leagues? Uh, so Luke, you created this uh, awesome <laughs> program uh, where for everybody playing KC Crew at that, uh, at that bar of the week, they get weekly specials. So some bars, it's a dollar, two dollars off drafts, or it's a special on a specific product. Uh, and then for the teams that win each week, they get a double bonus. So uh, you go playing KC Crew, uh, you win your game, you get free chips or queso at that bar of the week uh, right after your game or up to three days after. Uh, and then the teams that go the most that week, so it's all week long, Saturday through Sunday, they check in uh, on League Ally, they get a $100 gift card for going to the bar of the week and just checking in. So I look at it as almost another funnel is everybody in KC Crew gets the weekly, weekly specials, if you win your games, you get that double bonus, and then only one team of all 700 teams that week win the $100 gift card. So it's a way for people to uh, keep that community outside just the games. So they go to the bar of the week where a basketball team and a kickball team that may never interact are seeing each other at the bar, all wearing KC Crew shirts. Oh, cool. It's a win-win for our community because they get to all week long a bar that may be dead on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, uh, gets people coming to the bar that may have never may, may never heard of that bar. Uh, so marketing for them, uh, service for our players, uh, and then us, we also get, ask for $100 gift cards for our office because we make one make it a win for us. Uh, and then we go out there and patronize the bar for team outing. So we're trying to be build community in everything we do and make it a win. So Yep, I love that. And how this started was, again, me looking at other leagues and saying, you know, I'm playing in this other league for seven weeks and I can go to the same bar every week. Well, after week two or three, it's, the team doesn't want to go there anymore. They want to go try somewhere else or somewhere different. And so that was the reason I was like, well, we should do a Bar of the Week program. And in the beginning, it was very, very difficult. People didn't really know who we were. I had to go to lunch every day at a different bar and get to know the bartenders and try and beg them to do this. Well, then the next thing you know, it's like, wait, you're driving thousands of people in during the week, Monday through Thursday when nobody was here before or Sunday through Thursday. And it turned into a huge positive once we were able to drive more people in uh, using the double bonus system and the free nachos and free things like that, which we've learned along the way on how to exactly do that. 
and now the bars actually pay us to be a part of this. So it became a revenue generator for KC Crew, uh, and then we're also able to sell sponsorship on top of it, so the bars run specials on whatever product that we ran sponsorship on. So it became a really big win for us as a company, but also for the bars and the restaurants we work with to drive people in during the week. And then our participants get free stuff, they get to check out new places, and so I think that's a really, really big win. Uh, some of you may be, how, do you, how the heck do you manage it? Well, it's a lot of work reaching out to the bars, but once you prove yourself one season, they come back every single year, every single season, which is really, really cool. The second piece is our software, Facility Ally, League Ally, manages it. You put the bars in, you put the double bonus in, you put the check-in information in, and it's automated. The, the, the staff puts in the scores, it automatically calculates the winner, emails a coupon to everybody on the team, they walk in the bar, click a button for redeeming, they can check in through the software. So Facility Ally is really what makes this possible. Otherwise, it'd be a nightmare, which it was back in the day when I used to print the coupons, cut them, and hand them to the winning teams <laughs> to take into the bars. So the software really helped automate a lot of that stuff, and I think that's a huge win. So a couple more things, and then we'll wrap this up. You mentioned shirts. Let's just briefly touch on shirts, because shirts have been a nightmare, and we've talked many times about should we keep doing shirts, should we not keep doing shirts. So let's talk about the shirts. Yeah. Uh, like you said, it's all based on feedback. Uh, shirts start off us ordering them and hand delivering them to every location in a bag said hey who is john here's your large who's sally here's your whatever mark, mark yep. Yep. uh and now it's grown to all oh, i send in a list to our shirt provider and they order all the shirts print all the shirts package all the shirts and send them out to our players so they arrive to each person individually in their mailbox uh and ready to go before the first game well, one reason why we, re we require shirts, uh, we, we require one shirt per calendar year. So right now, if, if you play once with KC Crew, uh, you have to buy one, and then if you play again in the same season or again in 2023, uh, you don't have, you're not required to purchase a shirt. A lot of people do purchase different shirts for different colors, uh, but it helps advertise the league. So people wearing the shirts around town, uh, or if they go to another league, someone in, I think, Milwaukee or some other town was wearing a KC Crew shirt uh, playing in their pickleball league. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, so advertising, uh, when everybody goes in the bar of the week, they're all wearing the KC Crew shirts. It builds that community. Uh, and then in sports where you need like kickball and softball where there's two teams that are mixing, then everybody has the same color shirt. Uh, there's good positives, good negatives. We'll probably go around and around for the next couple of years on shirts, uh, best practices on them. And every league, every club has their perfect uh, thing for shirts. And I think that's just listening to feedback on players uh, on what they want. Yep. The shirts. Yep. And I think uh, there's several things there on shirts that we've just gone through. And one, it was, I didn't change the shirt design every single year. So people three, four, five years in a row, they were like, we just keep buying the same shirt every year. And so that was a big opening, like, well, maybe we should change the shirt design every year. And we started doing a co costume or a, a contest to design the shirt. And people love that. And then we started just coming up with a really cool city focused design. We have our 10 year design that Greg is displaying right here, modeling. And so we try and change it every year, depending on what the vibe is or the, you know, if there's something cool that year, let's make it a cool design that people want to wear the shirt they want to wear it to royals games chiefs games sporting games and then that gives us walking billboards which is really cool again as a business it's really difficult to manage especially if you don't have a shirt provider like we do which we just switched to a couple years ago but before that we were literally packing every single shirt shipping it to every person individually uh, that was a lot of work um, but also gave him, I uh, guess, the opportunity to be like, hey, we know where every single person lives. We know the demographics. We can now sell flyers to go in these shirts to different people and became a sponsorship opportunity for us. And then once we got tired of doing it ourselves, we found an awesome local partner that can ship and manage every single shirt individually. So now we don't touch any of the shirts. The negative part of that was we did have to increase our shirt fees a little bit, um, but it, it, it covered the cost. We, we make a little bit on shirts, but at the end of the day, it's really about uh, marketing, exposure, and trying to make it a cool design for our players. And that's how we think about shirts. Again, the software collects all of that information as everybody signs up and we just ship it off to our people. So that makes it really, really easy. Uh, what's the best mistake you've ever made? <laughs> I just let right into it from shirts. Yeah. What's the best mistake you've ever made? Uh, I touched on it earlier, but leaving KC Crew. So I was here 2014, two years part time, and then two years full time from 2016 to 2018. Then I left, went to Enterprise, went to kind of the corporate world. And like I touched on earlier, like we're pulling pieces that we learned, you know, Mitch was enterprise too, different pieces of the business. Like we started talking through how we can make additions to Casey crew and we start talking through something. And then we're like, this is exactly like this was the enterprise. So it's just cool to see, you know, 
it actually pay off. So you go there, you see the real world, you see how these companies are, you know, expanding and structuring across, you know, nations or international. Um, and again, training is a big piece of it as well. So what training processes do you have in place? Um, how do you expand quickly? And then again, what processes can you have to just optimize your performance across the board? So leaving there and then coming back, kind of having, you know, taking a breath, having a fresh breath of air um, and coming back in was uh, probably the best mistake I ever made. So can I say ditto to that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure can. You sure can. Um, and I think uh, from my end, it was uh, the best mistake was letting you guys go. Uh, you know, at the time when you guys were like, hey, you know, we we could go here and make more money. And, you know, Casey Crew was just getting started. It made sense. Right. I was like, look, that that's a great opportunity for you, for your lives. You know, it's a different vibe when you go to the corporate world uh, compared to like working in a small startup or a small business. Um, and it really was like for me, it was like, man, I don't want to lose these guys, but I don't know what to do as a business. Right. So you guys left. And then for me, you kept coming back was one of the coolest things ever. It was like, wow, I actually did something right. They want to come back. <laughs> and so that was really cool for me to be able to, you know, look at that because it was, you know, hard to do from then, but to have it come full circle and you guys come back and really take it over and make it your own and make it better has just been a really cool thing for me. To tie in uh, one of our core values, freedom, like you don't value freedom until you lose it. <laughs> so Casey Crew, you know, back the first time we were here, we, you know, I'd say we had freedom. We didn't have our core values in place, but you know, we left, went to the corporate world. I was, on, I had to be here at this time. I had, you know, had my one hour lunch break. I was off the clock here. Just felt like I was kind of a cog in the machine and, you know, working on someone else's schedule. I get back here, I get the opportunity to make my own schedule. And it's just, it's so much nicer, you know, not having to worry about what time you're in at the office. You get to work when you want to, but we all work in the office as a team. So and just the fun yeah. aspect. I mean, another core value, fun. Fun is everything we do. If we're not, if you're not having fun playing sports, you're doing it wrong. If we're not having fun in the office, for those watching, you can see our awesome office behind us. We play beer pong, we play pick, uh, pickleball right on the courts in Hy-Vee Arena. So we like to have fun and we don't take it for granted now that we've been in the corporate world where things are very structured and time-wise and you only have fun when they tell you you can have fun. Yeah. Not silly, but when they bring pizza party. Uh, if we're like, hey, we're bored, let's go play, or we're stressed, let's go play pickleball. Let's go do something, let's go shoot hoops. Uh, we really enjoy that now that we have, we're working here. Awesome. So last question, if somebody was a facility and they're looking to start their own leagues, what's the advice that you'd recommend they start with? You want to touch on that? Yeah, I would say it goes back to talking. If you have your own facility, you're already ahead of the game. You have a location you can run leagues at. So talk to the people that are coming into your facility. When do they want leagues to happen? If you run leagues on Sunday nights, but no one want, no one's, wants to do leagues Sunday nights and they're going to fail. So talk to your people coming into your facility uh, and running leagues when they want to play in the leagues. Uh, and what do they want to play? Let's say you have a great big space and they want to play kickball, play kickball. If you can do cornhole leagues, do cornhole leagues. So really talking with people and getting that feedback because I think that's what makes our league successful is we're always innovating and always asking for feedback and that can start from the beginning on what to offer. Uh, great, you have anything? Yeah, I would say, you know, really before you start, do your homework. You know, is this something that we even have the manpower to put on? If not, does it make sense? Like, can you do it? But would you need to outsource or bring in a company who does know how to do it? Because we've we've gone to uh, you know businesses in town before. Said, hey, let us help you do your leagues. They say no, we got it. They try it. a year later. They email us, hey, can you guys actually help come you know run our leagues? Doesn't always happen. Sometimes organizations figure it out. It just depends if you know you need a league. Isn't it's not a five hour thing. It's you know tens, maybe possibly hundreds of hours throughout. You know. A couple of different months of planning, organizing, consolidating, staffing schedules. Who's going to manage the day of? Who, you know, there's a lot of pieces that go into it. So, do your homework. Make sure you know the full extent of kind of what you're getting into of doing it the right way. Um, and if you don't think you have, because if you try it and you fail, that's a hundred to you know however many people that came in that had a bad experience. They're not going to come back if you try again. So when you do it, you want to make sure you do it right the first time. Um, so again, just really do your homework and make sure you know everything that you want to put into it and um, how much time it's going to take. Yep. I would echo that as far as do your homework. You know, I look at the gaps. So if there's nobody running pickleball in your area and you can run pickleball, start with pickleball. Don't start a softball league right next to another softball league because now you're competing head to head unless you have a really good offering that you're coming after. And so I think that's a really big piece. Do your homework, offer what's in the gap. 
and then yeah, make sure you can staff it. And the other piece is marketing. A lot of people, a lot of facilities think they can just start a league and people are going to sign up. You got to know where you're marketing it, how you're marketing it. Is it basketball? Well, where do the basketball players hang out? How do I market to the basketball players? So those two things, in my opinion, make sure you do your do your education. Make sure it's set up the correct way, priced correctly, can be managed, and then you have a marketing plan before you get out there. Um, and then. Use Facility Ally. Check it out at FacilityAlly.com. If you're looking to get into leagues, rentals, those sort of things, you can do all that, manage it all with Facility Ally. Or ask us. Or, yeah, or hire us, yeah, yeah. consulting. So, um, yeah, uh, we, today we deep dive on leagues. Obviously, we've been talking about leagues. Casey Crew does much, much more. Uh, we're going to have a future conversation on tournaments, corporate events, nonprofit fundraising. We got a lot going on with these guys, all using Facility Ally. So, look for future episodes. Thanks for joining us today about leagues, but we can't wait to see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,